everyone at just 15 years old. She was impregnated by her youth pastor in Alabama. Now, 15 years later, that same man pleaded guilty to lesser charges that kept him in prison. They now share custody of their child here in Tennessee. News Channel 5's Levi Ismail investigates how a child marriage can have a lifetime impact. Fine Enterprise pastor charged with rape has accepted a plea deal. Looked into the Coffee County Jail on Wednesday. Victims carry these things. A year and a half, the relationship between the two continued. Enterprise police filed a report. I hope that they heal, but most people carry these things for the rest of their lives. Bargain Great House will not have to register as a sex offender. What happened 15 years ago may as well be a memory from yesterday. Ashley Pereira remembers it all the same. She'll tell you it took every day since then. Looking back, even now, I don't know how I did it. To find the courage to be here now. You could put our ages together and our child's age. There's the crime. But no one actually was taking it seriously unless he was convicted. Pereira was 14. Jason Greathouse was 24. Statutory rape by any state law unless, and here's where it gets tricky, they get married. This isn't just about the one-time crime. This is about the rest of the victim's life of having to be around that person. Both now live just outside of Nashville, but grew up in the small town of Enterprise, Alabama. Pereira's parents pulled her from school because of some mental health issues. Desperate for answers, they turned to a local youth pastor. He said, you should bring Ashley and Craig to my youth group on Wednesdays, you know, just a new start. And so, that's uh, how I met Jason, and that's where my life turned forever. Great House was like a mentor, so it made sense that when he was strapped for money, the family invited him to move in. Unfortunately, that took a turn to where our bond and mentorship turned into something that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, and one thing led to another, and uh, I ended up losing my virginity to Jason at 14. What did your parents think at the time when all this was happening? And her response was, how was it? You know, her response wasn't, she wasn't angry, she didn't try to throw him out. A year later, Pereira was pregnant. Her parents insisted the two get married. They did just that, with parental consent. Pereira, now 16, and Great House, 26. That was it, is that it was my responsibility to make things work since I decided, I decided to give my body to somebody, you know, but I was a child. The marriage lasted no more than a year before Pereira filed for divorce. I had to emancipate myself so I could get an apartment and go to college and do all these things because I wasn't 18, I was a minor. So I would have ended up in foster care if I had not emancipated myself from my family. Getting out of forced marriage remains one of the toughest challenges for the more than 300,000 minors married between 2000 and 2018. Almost all cases are younger women marrying older men. Across the country, six states have banned marriage for anyone under 18. 35 states, including Alabama and Tennessee, have made it so that you can get married with a judge's signature at 17 and 16. Four states around the country have said you can do the same thing at 15 and 14 years old. Meanwhile, nine states have no age limit at all. In Tennessee and across the United States, this is a significant problem. Frady Reese is the founder of Unchained at Last. I was forced to marry at 19. She's testified in both Alabama and Tennessee legislatures, as well as several others around the country. Some of the stories that we have heard, particularly out of Tennessee, the kind of stuff that keeps you awake at night. Child marriage by definition is any marriage where at least one person is under 18. Up until 2018, there was nothing preventing any underage person in Tennessee from getting married as long as they had a signature from a judge. What were on our books as marriage were really just child abuse. State Senator Jeff Yarborough and State Representative Darren Jernigan both co-signed bills to bring the minimum age to 18. Then came the pushback. I know personal examples where it's worked. My wife and I were underage, and we got married here in Tennessee. These were the arguments against 18. If you're 16 years old, you can get an abortion. So we give a right to 16 and 17-year-olds to do a lot of things. 
But remember, at the time, there was no law on the books for a minimum age limit to marry. I don't like the fact that this bill says there are no exceptions. Legislators compromised by at least setting the minimum at 17. I think at the end of the day, we took the legislature as far as it was willing to go at that moment in time. But anything under 18 means child marriage still exists in Tennessee and 44 other states. Yarbrough and Jernigan say they have no issue bringing this back to the table, but there's one problem. It's only been three years. Many of those same opposing voices haven't gone anywhere. The same arguments may come up with the same players who were doing it before. A man is being charged with raping his former wife. One year of unsupervised... Pereira decided she could make a change by pressing rape charges nearly 14 years later. But because she had been married to Great House, prosecutors weren't sure they could get a conviction. Great House instead pleaded guilty to contributing to the delinquency of a minor, a misdemeanor with no jail time. It also means he can still share custody of their teen daughter. Do you feel like you've got any justice in all of this? I still don't have the right answers. You know, I can't say this is why it happened and try to sugarcoat things and make things okay because it's not. And that's the hardest part. That was Levi Ismail reporting. Our Investigates team works around the clock to uncover important issues that really matter to you. You can read more about Ashley's story on the Investigate section of newschannel5.com.